Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, we're going to take the typical parts that we've been using for our live streaming systems for um, ministries, and we're going to see, can we stream with it by running Linux on it instead of Windows? So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by. And on this channel, we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. So I've had a bunch of people ask me about this. And for those who don't know, Linux is just another operating system, um, just like Mac um, OS X as well as Windows. But the good thing about Linux, it is completely free and it has made some significant changes ever since I started messing with Red Hat Linux back in 98. So it's a lot more user friendly. And the best thing is every single part that goes into the live streaming systems that I build, they have compatibility and can be ran on Linux. So we're going to first get everything all prepped. We're going to cut over here. I am going to be installing Ubuntu, very popular um, Linux distribution. And you got a bunch of versions. We're going to download the most recent LTS long-term support version here. They do have 20.1. Well, should I? Eh, hey, let's just go for it. Let's go for 2010. Why don't we? So we're going to go ahead and start downloading that. And it's really straightforward. Um, it's going to take a minute for this to download, but we're going to convert this into a bootable USB, just like Windows has a bootable USB version. And I already have a drive made available to do that. So once it finished downloading, we'll take you through the process, have it installed. I actually have a system right here on the floor that we're going to be installing pretty soon. Um, and... This should be really good to go. And if you're wondering how I'm doing this, this is the Ada Imaging PTZ um, 20X IP camera that I'm using right now that we're going to be installing pretty much at another church later this week. And it's right there behind me if you were interested. Um, we're going to be doing a review, like I said, pretty soon about that. Um, but let me go ahead and get everything prepped, download, and once we start making the ISO, I'll take you along and we'll go from there. All right, our download is done, so we can cut over here to our desktop. All right, so we got everything here. Now, one thing that you need to turn this ISO into something that's bootable to a for your USB, um, at least the computers I have don't have a optical disk drive, which will be really easy to use, but it's just as easy to do this on USB. So what we need is a program, and I personally like Rufus, and that is at rufus.ie. There'll be a link. All the links and tools that I use will be in the description below. And you download this little program, and it's picking up my drive, and I want to make sure that's the right drive. I don't want to erase something I don't mean to. All right, so that's my H drive. It's a 16 gig um, stick and we're going to select our image, which is what we just downloaded. You to 2010 and we just got to go ahead and hit start and that's it. And we're going to let it do its thing right in ISO image mode. Yes. Okay. This will destroy everything that's on the thumb drive. That's why I want to make sure I got the right one. So go ahead and click. Okay. And it's just going to take a little bit for this to go. So I will be back once this is done. All righty. We are all done. So let's go ahead and get this over here. Let's go ahead and click close. And let's just open up my computer so we can see what it looks like now. And there we go. Everything has been set up. So let's go ahead and unplug this. And then we're going to switch over to this system here. And let's go ahead and get it prepped. All right, so I have it connected here. So hopefully it will 
boot up in here. And it takes a second since this is the first time it's been started up. And I am tapping the delete key so I can get into the BIOS. There we go. Now let's go through our BIOS setup here. And it's a little delayed from because I'm routing through this to see everything. Um see. CPU is showing up fine. Um, we got to change the date. Hasn't gone over yet. Because oh. it's the 28th. Yep, Sunday. And it is 1219. All righty. Now we are booting from the sand disk, which is the USB. And I like to have mine on fast boot. And honestly, a lot of this stuff really isn't needed because I'm going to be going back through this anyway um, when we install this for Windows because this is going to a church. This just happens to be I have all the parts here. So I wanted to play around with this first to see how it goes. Um, And then save and close. And now we're going to be, because we are, we saw that it's going to the USB, it should boot off of that and we'll go into the Ubuntu install. And like I said, OBS is present on um, Linux. We're going to go here to the regular Ubuntu install. Um, the capture card, it does have a Decklink mini recorder 4K inside of here. So there are drivers for Linux. For that, we also have their drivers for the motherboard, drivers for the graphics card. So everything should work because, again, for our live streaming systems, it's for live streaming only. So we don't need to in worry about installing a, a, bunch of, a whole bunch of extra stuff. And this is going to give me an opportunity to see if, make, I guess, the iteration of the OBS Complete Bundle, can that also go on Linux? And if so, we'll add um, update the downloadable file, and we'll have the Linux stuff as well, too. So let's let this go on. All right, so let's go ahead and install. Set our language. Now, you always could do try, and then that way it's actually not installing anything. And it's kind of like of a live CD, but we'll go ahead and install it. Pick your location, language, keyboard. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, I'll just keep everything on here. Continue. Because you could have did a minimum install. But again, I don't know. It's been a while since I've installed it, so I want to make sure everything is installed. It needs to be. We're going to go ahead and erase everything because there's nothing on the system anyway. It's a completely... Fresh drive. It's going to make the partitions. Let it do everything automatically. Pick our time zone. And we're going to pick our user. And I'm just going to say your name, AJ, the CEO. And we're going to set a password here. And I know it's going to say it's weak because this is going to be gone anyway. Once I'm done, I'm going to set this to log in automatically, but I probably I would recommend you don't do this. Put a password on it, just like on Windows. And then we're just going to let it finish doing its thing. I don't think it has any more questions for me to do, and it's just going to install everything. So we'll let it keep doing its thing. All right, let's go ahead and restart. And I'm also going to take the thumb drive out while we're going. It even says to do it as well, too. So it's out now. Enter. 
All right, so while this is starting up, what I plan on doing is running an additional output from my Atom Mini Pro ISO. I have it on a splitter here. I'm going to run that into the Decklink Mini Recorder. So we should be seeing exactly the same thing that I'm doing right now. And, of course, I will leave up the link if you want to check it out to see what the performance looks like in the stream. Um, let's go here. No, I don't want to send my info. Next. Privacy. No, I don't want my location. All right. We are done. So now let's go up here to Firefox. And let's go to obsproject.com. Open up a new tab. We're going to go to Blackmagic design.com all right so the first thing we need to do is we're going to download the drivers here for our deck link we're going to go to capture and playback let's scroll down some here all right there you go linux let's go ahead and get that download only And let's go ahead and open this with the archive manager. I still remember the days where you had to compile and do all this other stuff a lot easier than it, um, than it used to be. Let's go up here. And there's our files for that. Now let's go ahead and download the Linux version of this. And... It's actually saying we need to go ahead and do this stuff. Please note that OBS Studio is not fully working on Chrome OS features. Okay. So this is required. So we need to open up a terminal and install some of this stuff. You know, let's come back here. Set up our stuff here. If you've never done this before, always do the README. So at least you can know exactly what you need to do. What it can and can't do. X86, 64. And let's just go through all of the stuff, shall we? Or maybe I should have extracted it. <laughs> I thought it actually did that. So let's back up. We're going to extract everything. And we'll do it on the desktop. All right. And let's show the files. All right, let's go ahead and install. Asking for the password. Let that run. Shouldn't take very long. All right, so that's all done. And honestly, some of this other stuff we don't need. The, um, well, let's do the Media Express because we want to confirm that we actually are getting something here. And I guess the other one was just the drivers. So let's go ahead and install this. All righty, that one is done. Last one is the GUI interface for the actual deck link. All righty. So hopefully all that's done. All right. So now let's go ahead and get OBS installed. So it's saying here is a couple of things we got to do first. So we're going to need to install FF 
MPEG. And let's go ahead and just highlight highlight this. And we're going to copy this. All right, so let's open up another terminal here. And then we're just going to come over here and right click. And we're going to paste what we just copied. Oh, and I missed out on the S. Pseudo apt install ffmpeg. Put our password in. Yes, I want to continue. Let that go through. And then there's some other set of things that we need to do right under there. But that's going to install everything. And that's the next command that's right under here. So let's go over here and copy all of this. Make sure I get all the letters in here this time. Copy. Let's go back to our terminal. Paste. Let that run. And when we're done, we should have everything there. All right, so the rest of the stuff, we can just do the commands ourselves. We don't have to do all this copying and pasting and stuff. So we're going to do sudo apt git. Well, actually, I'm used to that. apt update. Let that update the repositor repositories. And then we're going to do an install OBS Studio. Yes. And somebody is speeding up and down the road. All right. That is it. Let's exit out of here. And now let's go over here. And there we go. Yay. Let's go ahead and open up OBS. And the traditional wizard pops up. Awesome. Now, what I'm going to do is take my thumb drive here and I'm going to carry it over, which has the OBS complete bundle, and then we'll go from there. And honestly, now I think about it, maybe I should just take the, um, the PTZ camera that I have and plug that in. That would probably be easier to do. I think I will do that. All right, so we got that there. So what we want to do is now... Let's just actually do some basic stuff first. So we want to go over here and add a plus. First off, do we see? Yep, we see the black magic stuff, which means our drivers were installed. Awesome. Okay. Let's select the device. And our input is HDMI. And boom, there you go. There is the PTZ. Perfectly good going through here. So now let's go over here to our settings. And let's set up everything like we normally would. I want to push this up to 1080p. At 60 frames a second. Let's go to our output. And see what options that we have. We only have one because I guess the NVIDIA stuff is still installing. But like I said, it's not a big deal because the processor is fast enough to handle it. So I'm just going to make a couple of changes here. And 
yeah, we should be good here. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to go to stream, and I'm going to point this to Vimeo. going to get my one-off stream key here so that we can do a test stream. All right, hopefully we got this one right now. Start streaming. We're checking out to see what the CPU CPU utilization is. Okay, we're only at okay, 21. Okay, 2022. Okay. So now let's go ahead and cut over to the actual stream itself. So, and this is where we're streaming to in Vimeo. If I put my hand down here, y'all can see. Thumbs up. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's look at stream health. We're at the right bit rate. We're at the right frame rate. Hey, everything is going good. So, again, the same system works with the same specs and this is all on Linux using just the CPU and it's um and the deck link and everything like that. I don't know why I paused there for a second. Now I'm wondering would it pick up if I connected the ATEM mini to it? I got another one right here behind me. Right there, if you see, that's for a church. But let me go ahead and get a cable. Let's see if we can get it connected and see if it shows up. I'm going to disconnect the cable from here from the... I'm trying to think. No, I already have the um, Canon G50 over here. We'll turn that on. We also need to turn on the A10. All right, so I disconnected the um, the A10. You're still seeing the main feed that's going in here, and you see both of the cameras are showing up. But what I want to do now is connect it over USB-C to see can I use this directly if I didn't have a deck link at all. All right, so we're all connected. Now, the USB does not give you multi-view, so I'm going to leave multi-view on. Multi-view is coming from the deck link or the HDMI through the capture device. So we're going to do a new source, I mean, excuse me, a new scene, and then we're going to do a new source where we're just going to do a generic capture device. And let's see, does that, it, yes, it does. And we know it's the right one because it's not a multi-view. So if we do studio mode and switch over. Now you can see that we are going to both. One on the left is going through the deck link. The one on the right is the ATEM USB out. So if we switch. Awesome. And again, we're right at about 24%. Okay, it just jumped up to 26 it says our frame rate is only at 32.9, but it's saying it's receiving more. So I don't know. Let's change this camera a little bit. All right, so now we've moved up. And yeah, it looks like everything is fine from here which is really cool. So if we cut back over here to the screen so y'all can see, everything is good. It's saying it's at 59 frames per second, 60. And if we switch back over here, um, oh, I forgot how I have it set up. I can't see what's going on when I have it set like this. Um, let's go ahead and switch it over. 
to our multi view. And now let's switch back. Yeah, so we can see all of our inputs, and I am nowhere close <laughs> to over here to where I can change the ATEM. But since it's on my network, let me pull up my ATEM over here, and I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and connect to the other one. All right, so now we're on that one. So now I can make changes. We can switch between camera one and camera two. All right, so there is the Canon G50 hooked up to it. And then we're switching back to the Ada Imaging PTZ. And everything is rolling good because if we cut back, I mean, we're not even, okay, it's jumped up to around like 32%. But again, if this was all you were doing, nothing but live streaming on here, you can get away with it. Now, one last thing, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. All right, and I'll have a link, like I said, to the stream if you want to see but what we want to do now is we have our thumb drive in here. We want to see, can we install the OBS Complete Bundle as well? So we need to first, and I need a better screen so I can see. Let's go ahead and minimize this. Let's get this closed. And we want to copy over... Complete bundle right here. And we want to extract that. Let's put that under downloads, shall we? Put it over here. Let's extract all. And it should be straightforward because, I mean, there's nothing that's um, OS specific in here. So, and just like we said with other times when y'all are using different software, because it's not in the same format, we're definitely going to have to remap everything to appropriate location. So let's go to our scene collection. We're going to do an import. Yes. Let's find out where it is. We're under downloads. OBS complete bundle, then import, scene collection, media ministry. And again, like I said, nothing is working because we need to point it to the new path. Boom, there we go. And we are getting sound. And I don't have enough, I'm not going to go through each one of these, but we do realize we just got to point to our new source and then we're good to go. Let's do the ending one. And our stream, we are going to All right, it looks like it didn't like the um, it didn't like the pre-configured capture device. So let's see if we can go back in there and purge that one out. Nah, it doesn't like it at all. So I'm gonna have to go in so I would have to make a specific um, Linux version that does not have that capture device in there but hey I am happy that it, we were able to get it as far as we did so if we come back in here let's open it up one more time and I'm just going to stream that intro that we had so 
So our starting soon. We'll start streaming that. And I need to come back out of here. And I think I have my computer audio on. So you should be able to hear what's going on. So we cut over. Oh, there you go. Now let me... Awesome. So... (laughs) It is. So all the parts that we had work on Linux and you can have a dedicated live streaming system. And if you, you know, you go through a couple of hoops, but they're not really um, difficult. It's it's just a little bit different because most people haven't used Linux, but it's pretty straightforward that you just copy those commands that I had on there. And I have a link to everywhere when I went. It's actually every link that you download, it pulled up the instructions when OBS, it took takes you to the Linux page on what you need to do, the wiki that shows you how to do everything. But, I mean, that was really straightforward. Download the drivers from Blackmagic stuff, let it run, installs all three of those. Um, the, the firmware, the drivers, it also installs the GUI to interface with the deck link. Then it also has the Media Express. If you needed to check out anything, that was straightforward. Then... Honestly, the NVIDIA drivers, really, you didn't need, and which we didn't need because it didn't show up anyway as hardware. It detected so we can have graphics. That's really all you need it for. The CPU was fast enough to where, yeah, it was going at 30%, but if this is the only thing it's using, you you got a whole bunch more overhead just to live stream, and we saw it. It was able to stream at 1080p at 60 frames a second, and it wasn't having any issue at all, so... Like I said, link will be in the description for everything um, that I used here, um, parts, everything. And I'll try and put as much instructions as possible on what to do to get everything set up. But, hey, it works. Works on Windows, works on um, Linux. And I'm sure, I really don't want to do this, um, I'm sure it could probably work if we turned it into a Hackintosh. Um, But I don't want to do that. So please don't ask. <laughs> but um, um, I guess for the people who asked, yes, it does work. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like. Consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. I want to thank the patrons and the YouTube members for making this video possible. Their names are on the screen right now. And you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Or you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button below. No matter which way you pick, folks, you are helping us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ, and we will see you on the next video. Later.